Welcome everyone to Crush Cash Games episode 18. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please just take a second and do so. I think that would be pretty swell. If you're out in Vegas dealing with the ridiculous weather, good luck out there. Wear plenty of sunscreen and uh, try to pick a tournament for four or five hundred thousand dollars. Today's session is going to be focused on more mid stakes, two for no limit. Looks like we're getting the king queens off to start at the top and bottom left. We got a, a fish in the five seat at the top left who limps in middle position. We should raise it up here. Just a straight value play. And we already mess up by cascading the tables. Not the greatest of ways to start out a video, but hey. Um, see you betting with the king queen. Our sizing could be a little smaller uh, on a board like this versus what we've already identified to be a weak fish type player. I don't really think we should be worried about being exploited. I don't think they're going to be bluffing us too often in that spot, so... We can just, I, I could have bet probably 12 or 16. The reason I like going a little bigger sizing than most people on dry boards when I'm out of position like that is to discourage floating. Obviously floating is going to be something we have to take into consideration. How do we defend against light floats? And I like sizing a little bigger on the flop and you know getting a little creative farther along down the decision tree maybe going for a check raise on the turn uh just kind of feeling things out but against players who are prone to float us i'm definitely not not willing to just wave the white flag limp call with the seven eight suited versus a shorty we have our flush draw. I think the shorty would be betting uh, his air on this flop. The plan was to basically check raise and get it in. But since he checked back, I like to think he has some sort of showdown value. Since he checked back the turn, maybe ace high, but, you know, I have no earthly idea what he had. Checking back on that board and then just never betting, it it seems a little silly. Queen 10 suited at the top left, hopefully getting called from the big blind by our friend, Mr. Fish. Again, another dry board versus the fish. Uh, he leads into us. In my experience lately with weak fish type players, they are more than willing to lead with just air balls. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know like what the uh, the epidemic is that has caused fish to do this, but they do. I'm probably not going to end up calling this. Um, in, in in retrospect, I feel like I should have, because for whatever reason, fish have just been leading out. Uh, but I I do like to think that he would continue on the turn with his air balls. So if he does continue on the turn, I really really like raising him with our gut shot. I don't think we have to raise anything obnoxiously huge to get the job done. Uh, so we got a flush draw at the top left and seabed unfortunately just works. No reason to three bet. Ace queen off. 
facing an undergun raise from a player. I mean, he's only played seven hands, so we don't really have much information on him, but still no reason to to three bet and fold out all the hands that we actually have dominated. Queens at the top right, C bet gets called. Um Obviously, we're going to continue betting on the turn if we get check raised. Is it very believable? I mean, what can he what can he be repping with the check raise here? Deuces, trays, nines, nine seven. Those are the hands that beat us. Nines is unlikely. Sevens is possible. Um, the king of hearts is really seems like a bad card for him. We have so many flush draws that call his check raise on the turn. Uh, yeah, just called us with the float and d decided to check raise our double barrel. Like I said, though, with the queens, though, like, what is he repping? He's three betting nines. He's probably three betting sevens. Deuces and trays are possible, but it's really hard to flop a set. I don't know if you've realized this. Um, so he's not extremely credible with his check raise there. Obviously, we're not re-raising, just calling to induce another bet on the river, but... We aren't generally folding the river. The cards that we might fold to would be the hearts, and that's because our range is protected. We have a lot of heart draws, combo draws in our range, so it's really hard for him to muster one more bet on the river without the flush, of course. Excuse me. I don't know what to make of the tiny C bet at the top right, where we had the ace queen on the monotone board. Three ways. I, I don't exactly know what range does that. I would expect him to have some sort of value, though. I expect, uh, generally I would expect uh, another bet by the four seat, but I can understand why I check back with kings once the jack pairs. The two seat with the nines, I think that's a pretty liberal call on the turn. I, I don't think you're doing very well versus an under the gun open, a C bet three ways, and then a bet on the turn. Like, best case scenario... Our villain has ace king with the ace of diamonds, but I think more often than not, he's just got a value hand, possibly with a diamond, and we're drawing to a nine. And maybe maybe we don't even have a nine. Maybe he just flopped the nuts. Uh, that's entirely possible. So the nines is, frankly, it's just a fold on the turn. Calling the turn is not going to turn a profit. I guess the, the reason rationale for thinking you might want to peel the turn in that spot is that he's giving us a good price, three to one, when we need about four and a half to one to peel our flush, but 
how do we how do we feel when we actually peel the flush like not so fantastic not a lot of action I hope everybody out there has seen Jurassic World it was pretty good I just dated myself for anybody watching this video in the future Queen 10 suited at the top left, we flop another flush draw against the same guy that we had the Queen 10 of hearts. So the 8s at the top right, we could have probably 3-bet the 8s. It feels close to me. And so now what? Now we open up a can of worms by flatting. And we're probably going to end up just flatting, yep. And we flop an overpair. This is... <laughs> I would expect the one seat to bet. Almost always, actually. I think it's a, probably a bad check once you squeeze on this board. Now I think the five seat uh, we kind of left the door open for the five seat to go ahead and take a stab at this pot. I think our eights are doing very well against the five seats range. Once the one seat folds out, we're we're looking pretty pretty good. Looks like we're going to throw a little value bet out there. If he raises, we call. It's not even... We're not even going to give it a second thought. We may should have made a bigger size value bet to kind of polarize our range. I think we're winning most of the time. I don't think he's checking back his overpairs but how do we get called by like ace high if he does have ace high i think polarizing our range works very well betting something like 246 a big bet that piques his curiosity i think the small bet kind of makes it look like we have exactly what we have and i think our intentions are kind of transparent so I think sizing wise with the eights we should for sure have have one with the larger sizing. Ace king off at the bottom right and king queen off at the bottom left. We should probably be folding the king queen off. <laughs> uh under the gun open, out of position, his range is going to be pretty strong. The one seat, also kind of tight. His range is going to be strong as well. Um, the big blind, his range is not going to be strong whatsoever. And he leads one-tenth pot into the field. What kind of hand makes a raise to half pot wow bet three bet at the bottom left by the fish who led minimal into the field i would say bet three bets generally are super strong I guess bet four bets are even stronger. Queen 
one seed is probably kicking himself right now for flopping. What was the bottom card of four? Four is full. Either four is full or, or ace ten. I don't really see a reason to four bet once the four seed goes ahead and puts in the bet three bet like because it was so oddly played they bet minimum um the one seat raised small and the four seat basically re-raised tiny like i do feel as if the four seats range isn't entirely value i don't know if he has any just stone cold bluffs in there but i do think there's a good argument for just flatting the bet three bet letting the four seat go ahead and bet the turn. I mean, especially when we have basically the nuts with pocket fours. We, You may think, oh, well, like if he has queen 10 or king 10 or ace 10 or whatever peels off on the turn, then... We're going to lose, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to lose anyway. Like, if a king is destined to come on the turn and he has king 10, he's not folding on the flop no matter what we do. So it doesn't really matter. The only pro the biggest problem with 4-betting is we fold out a lot of his marginal hands that aren't going to continue, just like we did. Four seat continues torturing the one seat at the bottom left. Have to imagine that the one seat had a value hand three betting under the gun plus one. I don't think we should really be folding this six seven. I think we should peel a flop. Attaboy changed our mind at the last second. That's why you should never click the auto fold button because we don't really know what's going to happen some scenario could pop up where it looks like a profitable spot for us to cold four bet or maybe somebody re-raises minimum like there somebody like limps to eight and then somebody makes it limps for four and then somebody makes it eight like, I find that that's a very good spot to just go ahead and put in a 3-bet. Like, we pick it up, pick up the pot most of the time. It can really turn any two cards. It can really make any two cards profitable. Pretty good hand at the bottom right versus... Kind of a tight opener, 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 who's losing. Unfortunately, we haven't three bet yet. Kind of just hoping he goes nuts. Call is certainly acceptable. In spots like that on king seven five versus a tight guy that we three bet and he flats like what are we thinking if he raises us the problem with getting raised on that board is he shouldn't really be raising his value he should let us go ahead and keep firing And he's not going to be raising like king queen suited or something like that. He's for sure just calling and going to let us keep firing. So we're not really worried if we do get raised. When he flats, then it gets a little trickier. I fully expect him to flat all of his sets and king queen suited basically 
I don't think King Queen suited we're getting three bets from. So once he flats, he either has a float, a set, or like King Queen suited, maybe King Jack suited. He may fold that one pre. So I think a check on the turn is our best play with aces. We're not, like I said, we're not going to get two bets out of King Queen suited. When we bet and then jam the river, we're going to run into more sets. And just not going to be a very profitable bet, 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 all in type situation. Would feel much better about it on, you know, 7-7 seven, seven deuce. Looks like our 3-6 table is just kind of eh. The 2 seat is a spot. The 3 seat's an unknown. The others look pretty reasonable. The 5 seat's already shown a chink in his armor with um, stabbing in a spot that is gonna be uh it's gonna be tough to go through on the four four six like i have a lot of pocket pairs in my range he's got to know that he's got to know that most of the time he's getting getting called at least once so in order to bluff profitably in that spot he's got to invest multiple barrels How on earth do people make videos only playing two tables at a time? I feel like I need four more just to make sure there's always something interesting happening at, at, at every single table. Or no, not something interesting at every single table. Something interesting every single second of the video. I would not be able to handle that many interesting things happening at once. Little tip if you're concerned. I uh, downloaded an app called F.Lux on my Mac. When it gets night out, night time, the app dims your screen. Or actually it doesn't dim it. it removes the blue light spectrum which is triggers your fight or flight and hinders your ability to sleep every night so if you're finding yourself looking at your computer a lot at night before you go to bed you may want to check that app out pretty vital Top left, monotone board, we have blockers. We decide not to continue firing, and we didn't even need to. Pretty horrendous play by on his part, just check calling and hoping for something. Hoping to make his little flush or a straight or a king. Seems like a much better strategy to go ahead and see bet. I feel like I need to manufacture some spots here. Can I just cold four bet randomly for no reason at all? 
probably wouldn't be too good for my win rate, I wouldn't imagine. For all of my listeners who have made it this far, if you subscribe to my channel, I am going to be giving away one month worth of poker coaching on August the 1st, which is worth about $600. So be sure to click that little subscribe button and get notifications from this guy. Pretty good turn card. At the bottom left, we opted to we opted to float out of position with our blockers. Um, just thinking that thinking that a lot of his aces don't see bet the flop; they actually check it back. Because of that, we kind of use that knowledge to hope for a check check on the turn and then we're going to bet the river and basically make him fold uh, instead we bink our straight we don't really think he has an ace because he checked back the turn um, there's really no chance that we don't have the best hand here all of his value is going to continue betting on the turn. He capped his range by checking back. So we are going to re-raise. Just how much do we re-raise? Um, I like that sizing. 100 more. It really just feels like a bluff. I have to think that the only reason he raised us was because we took a little 40% bet sizing line on the river always something important to think about trying to induce a raise once our opponents is our opponent's range is capped and they most likely don't have anything we're at the top of our range how do we get value Now he does the old knew he should have just called, but he had he had dust. He couldn't call us with what he didn't have. Now he bets bets with our sevens. Um giving him a little credit if we peel there we're most likely going to be facing a river bet and we need to be able to call the river as well I don't know if this is the type of guy that's going to arbitrarily bet 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 so we opted to play a little conservative and just not call in the turn Don't really love cold four betting versus an under the gun plus one and a small blind flatter, but and a small blind three better I mean. But he's three betting a pretty wide margin. Ace King suited is just too strong of a hand to flat with. So we float with the king queen, we make a queen. Um, do not think he's going to be doubling there very light. We have a lot of negative implied odds if, you know, we make a king, we make a queen. So just opting to give it up on the turn. What we really wanted obviously was just a check from the preflop raiser so that we could throw out a little bet and hopefully take it down
everybody, I want to thank you for tuning in to the 18th episode of my show. I love making it. If you have any advice, any questions, any comments, feel free to ask me. It does look like we made a little check raise at the top right after the one seat check back and then tried to rep trip aces. Get out of here with that. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Take care.